Uh, hi everyone, I'm Greg Colling. Um, today we'd like to talk about the atmosphere and um, why going for the ready uh, cloud deployment tools in an impression way. Uh, so atmosphere is an Ansible collection. It's an open source project. Uh, it's a basically an Ansible collection. Uh, that makes it run as opposed to deploying uh, OSA accounts and, uh, and uh, other services as well. Uh, the Atmosphere is the project that we use to deploy all of our public clouds. That's three public cloud data center, and also uh, more than dozens of our private cloud and managing of host private clouds. Let's combine about a hundred uh, of the production clouds. Um, so it, it's what we've been using all the time. Nothing modified, we directly use it to deploy the clouds. Uh, so, um, it's a, uh, from architecture speaking, uh, it's gonna be just Kubernetes or the Kubernetes. But there's much more. Uh, which I'm, I think I'm going to start to explain. The first, let's start with uh, inside the, the, the project stuff. So like I say, it's an Ansible collection. So you can directly download the atmosphere with uh, inside the Ansible collections and run. Um, and everything atmosphere is everything atmosphere groups are all open sourced, uh, so nothing be, nothing hide it. Uh, so you can uh, just build, uh, use it for uh, for your own free. Um, the, if you look inside the atmosphere GitHub, you will be able to see the not just the code, but uh, we actually have a very nice document, and also we have the channel in Kubernetes, uh, in Kubernetes stack uh, uh, for atmosphere. Uh, so if you have questions, you can go there as well, or you can fire GitHub uh, issue here, and uh, pull request will be even better. So the documenting will link you to the documents. Uh, the text show you how to install, uh, run, configs, and do everything with, uh, with the atmosphere. Um, from the code base, look, the, uh, the deployment depends on all the communities uh, patches. Um, mostly the Kubernetes was installed with another Ansible playbook. Uh, Ansible playbook. Of course, it's open source uh, called uh, uh, Vexos Kubernetes. And the uh, Vexos app uh, is for us to deploy uh, the app. The playbook entries, uh, if you don't know about Ansible playbooks, you can define the playbooks direction. Inside, uh, from very top, you will see it installs everything. The SAP, the Kubernetes, and everything you need it. The database, the corpus permissions, and finally the, uh, the OpenStack clouds on top. And, and there's a, so inside, uh, besides the Kubernetes and SAP, other things that need to be deployed, you can see, you can find it in the uh, in the in the roads directions under atmosphere, and also whatever images we changes, like for example, we need for example, we need to change some images, uh, or we need to edit some things. We you can find it in uh, atmosphere images direction. Uh, so those are pretty much the most important uh, things that from uh, uh, code base. And I think that is not the only thing. So from the glance and what I introduced, it's pretty much the standard, uh, you know, the sandwich style Kubernetes and all this thing. Uh, nothing gets uh, news. So uh, I guess I'm going to start to explain why I call it in fashion ways. Um, makes, maybe that makes sense to you too. The first is test and run. So the way to test and run with uh, atmosphere is actually very simple. If you go into the document and go click the quick start, uh, you'll be able to see there's already documents for you to show you how you can do the test by yourself. Uh, the on default everything runs, uh, all the service uh, is enabled. So you want well, you want to make sure you have like eight to sixteen CPUs, uh, virtual CPUs, to install uh, to use. And to test with atmosphere, you just need one single uh, instance whatever the VM that could be. Uh, like you can use Ubuntu, uh, Jeremy, and then you uh, install Git and Tux, clone the, the atmosphere, and if you want to do the OP environment, 
uh, you do this tux command. If not, you won't do OBS, you do the next. So let's directly go to the, uh, the environment. So here, this is a very clean environment that I just installed uh, like 20 minutes ago. And inside, I put out the atmosphere to save or to save the uh, outline. Uh, then we just need to run this task command. So this task command is just a very tiny wrap up that help you to uh, run molecular uh, and to, the molecular module will do two things. One, it gonna create a inventory. So uh, whoever not familiar with Ansible, the two things matter in Ansible. One is have a host file and config. That's an inventory. The other two is the playbook. So the command, the monitor just help you to uh, generate the inventory and run the playbooks against the inventory. Uh, let me show you what the inventory might looks like. Um, so here I, already, I have another already deployed environment. And you can see the, uh, this is using the multi-mode, uh, multi-mode way to build the, uh, to build the, the test environment, uh, which uh, generate the, uh, the entire uh, inventory too. Uh, the way the multi-mode works also documented in the quick start documents you can check. Uh, you, you need to have open state clouds uh, to, in order to able to uh, play with it because the, the, the test of the multi node is also using the task command and uh, they will create a heat stake and inside the heat stake you will create a machine and give it that controller and compute nodes, uh, this kind of rows. Um, and then insert the keys inside and in also like to in create a uh, create an inventory for you. And the rest goes exactly the same way as you want to do in production, which is from the command. Uh, yeah, let's go back to show you what the inventory looks like. So if you look into the inventory, you will see uh, in the file, two things matter. One is where is the node? You see here they got the, the host, the, where's the keys and what user you want to interact, interact with. Uh, the second part matters is you want to give it a tag. The tag like three tags matters, compute, controllers, and steps. So all the three, uh, all the three tags are going to be using for your following deployments. And also in the inventories, uh, if you run the test, then, or you, if you don't know how to create an inventory, you can also run the test first. And if you check inside, Uh, all the all the uh, variables are documented inside. It's actually not that hard. It just basically how sh you must show the uh, the SOL playbooks. I'll say uh, atmosphere here. How to map from physical uh, interface to to the needs for the clouds. And although you don't have to worry about too much about where should I define it because if you run the test comments once, then you will actually have a pretty nice template. You just uh, mostly you can just rewrite and then do do your own uh, environment. Like say, well, say example, uh, you, uh, you class each type and you read faces. And that's pretty much it. You need to, uh, you need to, to, uh, to change in the inventory. And when you're done with, uh, when you're done with inventory, for example, if you create a new inventory like what I have here, uh, what you can run against it is either run with like what we do in production, which is this command there to run against the Ansible collection. Um, if you just want part of it, you can just add a, 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 a dash key. For example, I want just one neutron. Then it will just run the neutron part of the, the services. Um, if you just want to run just the neutron part, or if you just want to run the Kubernetes, uh, or you just want to run the open state part, uh, you can just run, you can just change from, change the, uh, the playbooks. So for example, if I change the side here to, uh, to SAP, they will just install the SAP beneath, but nothing in Kubernetes so the stack. Uh, this is very common things we do, because sometimes you have to go deploy production clouds. That is a huge customer. 
And the huge customers, uh, sometimes they have very large structures you better to take one step at a time. So sometimes is you separate, like for example, you, do, you deploy uh, uh, seven Kubernetes first and do the verify. Then you, uh, then you uh, check out their NPC environment and do the, uh, the open stack. Uh, even if everything just works, but the customer also, also like to check in and verify. Uh, the, the, the way to do the test is also very simple. You're just using the uh, verify command. I'm, I'll show you later. Um, so anyway, that's how you test with the with this project. And of, of course, you can change the uh, the Vexos. Oh, not this one. You can just change uh, the Vexos uh, atmosphere side to a render a playbook in the in the repository. Uh, they will directly work as well. Um, so the thing I would like to say is the atmosphere, how we run and how we test atmosphere here uh, in production is, is pretty much exactly the same way uh, for most of the times because uh, the, the, the entry point in the script is the same. We can simulate the, uh, the, the, the customer environment, all the, all the interfaces. So uh, nothing, really goes, nothing really goes wrong uh, from that point. You just need to be careful if there's any surprise, but usually that's a pretty decent weight. Uh, the next thing we I would like to point out about uh, the nice about atmosphere is the containerized. And of course, when you're using Kubernetes to run OpenStack with Helm, everything is containerized. Uh, nothing surprised about that. But uh, I think we put some effort to uh, to make sure like everything uh, makes sense is containerized. Uh, for example, uh, in, uh, in which just in, just within this year, uh, I re I rewrite the SAP, our SAP playbooks uh, to make sure we're using uh, SAP admin, and then the SAP admin using uh, containers to uh, manage our uh, SAP monitor and OSD demons. So everything the SAP requires, the services are inside containers. Of course, the data itself is exists in the physical node. So the efforts that we put on, put on not just for uh, Kubernetes staff, but also uh, like other other packages, uh, the result is we don't need to actually care about the operating systems that much anymore. As long as the operating operating systems contains uh, NetSpaces, the, the way to run containers, and the virtualization support, the rest doesn't matter that much at all. Uh, I, I think it's very neat because that. Uh, from passing this goal of these years, and we this uh, we make this uh, continuous, and a lot of environments doesn't need to actually require to uh, verify the operating system that much anymore. Uh, the customer get to choose, or the user whoever use this project, they get to choose what, whatever the operating system they need. Uh, our most test is with Ubuntu, but you can pick others like CentOS. Uh, send a string if you want. Uh, another nice thing that I like to I like to show out is the Magnum cluster API driver. Now, Magnum cluster API driver itself is actually a different project. Uh, so, if you have Magnum and if you have another Kubernetes cluster uh, that exposes a cluster API driver against OpenStack. Um, that you can use, you can use this uh, Magnum Cluster API driver uh, in your own clouds. It, does, it doesn't need to be uh, deployed by the Atmosphere at all. But I mentioned here in Atmosphere, it's because it's pretty nice that, um, so Atmosphere, like we, we're using Helm to deploy the OpenStack. So it's Kubernetes, uh, then there's OpenStack on top. Now with Magnum, there's supposed to be Kubernetes on top, and now the Kubernetes Using the cross APIs directly manage and uh, orchestrate by the beneath level of the Kubernetes. But because with Magnum and using the OpenStack way to manage those uh, machines, so you don't overexpose your uh, you don't over your you overexpose your Kubernetes to the end user. You man you manage your your users Kubernetes cluster exactly the same way that. Lay, let them manage other VMs or bare metals. Uh, it's multi-tenanted and also inside of a horizon dashboard. Um, so the, the, the resource consumption becomes really low. 
the performance uh, becomes a bit better because it gets stable. And also the deployment ties gets, gets way faster. In O8, if you're using heat driver uh, with magnets, you have to you have to uh, install the entire class because you, you need to install from scratch. And now you just using the class API and the time compare is with heat driver, the default driver in communities, it probably took you 10 minutes to 20 minutes to install a cluster. And it's not guaranteed to upgrade and downgrade and everything that maintains. Uh, with class API driver, you can do the entire cluster will speed up within a, uh, within a single minute. And it's uh, even more stable because all, all the, all the deployment, uh, deployment ways and uh, managed ways is directly managed by the Kubernetes beneath. Uh, the next thing I would like to point out is the single sign-on. It's actually not that new for, for cloud technology. But nowadays the clouds get more mature and and I think all the all the all the sessions you've been to and you'll see people integrate a lot of a lot of uh, of the projects into single clouds. Uh, the single sign-on becomes something that matters. At least it's really matter to for uh, for our public cloud too and for, for a lot of uh, our uh, customer is that uh, the single sign-on helped us to manage uh, the, uh, the identities more securely. Because not every open source project that integrated uh, itself can provide a uh, good authentication. So uh, the, the with Kingcloud integrated in the atmosphere, um, a lot like uh, your Grafana protos, your OpenStack protos can all be uh, authenticated and uh, copied inside the Kingcloud. Um, so there is security gets pretty much improved, I would say, and you don't have to worry about any redundant setup in your for and for security leak. Uh, next thing I would like to raise as cool stuff is the alerts. Now all alerts is not something that special; it's pretty normal. It's just a standard Prometheus gets gets the metrics and uh, throw to alerts, and at the end the alarm trigger in your forums and you have to go to work. Um, the the things that I think we're doing nice is about what we learned. Um, if you check out the alarms inside the uh, atmosphere, If you check out the alarm inside the atmosphere, you can find them in the Kubernetes Prometheus stake. And inside, you'll be able to see all the alarms we defined it. And all the alarm, these alarms are exactly the same alarms and the same settings that we're using for all the clouds, including our, our public clouds. So the alarms that we now with atmosphere is already well set up. Um, inside, you'll be able to see where we help you to define it. Uh, uh, what level of the alerts, what is the uh, values that you should be uh, aware of when, when it comes to your clouds. Uh, of course, you can overwrite and you can rewrite the entire alerts. But all these are, uh, we work with this and keep adding in from time, from time to uh, from time that we have to, to nowadays. Uh, we never end to, uh, to adding new alerts and trying to tune this one. And sometimes if we find there's a missing piece, for example, if we look at around, uh, alerts around, uh, for SAP, there's a blue, there's blue stone fragment, uh, probably not managed by, probably not managed and not uh, monitored in your cloud, uh, because there's not a direct tool to do that. Uh, we write, uh, we really write a, a non exposers to expose that to uh, inside the atmosphere. So we can collect that to uh, by ourselves, and of course, everything I mentioned is open source in the, in that GitHub. So we keep, tu we keep tuning the the alarm. So that's the cool part of the alerts that we've been on. we put on in the uh, atmosphere in this uh, open source project. It is that's actually the one that uh, when you're running a cloud, I I'm gonna say make a lot of sense to you too. Uh, so from architecture speaking. Uh, I guess what, we, what I just say is uh, to add some new features. Yeah. Integrate something that I think is cool inside of the uh, inside of atmosphere. Uh, but there's actually much more. Um, 
I really wish I had time because like the Macnam cluster API driver, I want to spend like hours talking about it because it's really cool. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, we only have like now it's 10 minutes left. Um, and but there's some other cool stuff like uh, uh, Staplin. Uh, so Staplin is a single volume PRF pickup services I wrote. And there's another, there's other like uh, neutron policy server. Uh, let it help you to honor the the IP bindings uh, when you try to update the delete the port. They will make sure that inside project the port, uh, whenever other IP in the project binding binding to your binding to the port will be honored and not get uh, destroyed together. Which if you're wrong with, uh, with if you didn't do things in the pod in the policy that pretty much the same happens in your clouds now. Uh, so I think about integrations. It's like uh, we keep adding new things, like building the cars, and a lot of cool things, cool new features. And I say atmosphere is exactly that layer that help you to bring this up. We didn't we didn't invent too much of the new um, new next generation stuff, but we're trying to find ways to group those things together and compete them with a uh, with a proper way. So we directly use that. Uh, we don't need to do much things uh, to, uh, to drive the car. And it took time uh, as, as we also like the cars innovate. Uh, the cars 10 years ago is not about the Kubernetes OpenStack sandwich. Uh, the, cow, the cars 10 years after probably will not be the OpenStack Kubernetes, Kubernetes sandwich as well. So things need to be integrated and to uh, innovate through time. Uh, so maybe after uh, the, uh, the entire integrations is uh, can bring us to uh, a better car, but we just want to using the we want we want using the atmosphere this project as a as a way that to bind and group the entire car to running. So we're talking about to run long terms to to have innovation ways and keep innovation. So it needs time, and when these times you need to upgrade your clouds. Um, like you don't you don't want very old clouds that. Although it could be very stable, but the feature is not there. The users are changing their way to adoption of clouds. Of course, we call AI nowadays. A lot of things come and goes with very fast and very large data consumptions, with like uh, old, uh, with like a very huge data uh, map and reduce. Um, so you need to upgrade. But we're talking we're talking about, uh, uh, about upgrade in the old ways is. In uh, years ago, we say it's fast and furious. Uh, so you upgrade, you get the gods, and then you're trying to uh, you're trying to run through. But when there is something happens during your, you you have planned everything out. But if, when there is something wrong, you have no idea how to do. Um, so the thing I say about in the upgrade nowadays, and also what we do in Netflix series, we try to live long. So uh, let me explain what I mean when I say to live long in an upgrade. Uh, the first thing, at the most here, this project can directly deploy OpenStack up to master. So if you if you download that and install that, you will directly get OpenStack master and all the way to that. Um, uh, for all the uh, from master things and all the branches are production ready. That's a cool part because we directly use that as well. So you don't have to wait for uh, you don't have to wait for the the versions. And we have like for this for the charts that we uh, for example we see uh, Helm charts uh, for this one is Bobby Can. So whenever we have something to fix, we throw to the upstream too. And then eventually inside inside the upstream, when you pick up, uh, you will see it. Uh, this one is merged and it merged at the version three point thirteen. So when we found the Bobby Can to three point thirteen, we can actually remove the patches here. And for the stable branches or for the patches that not yet go to upstream, uh, there is a patches in chart that we can put those patches here. So the git patches here will either for uh, stable branches or for the for the for the, for the patches that not yet not yet go into the upstream, which will go to pretty soon. Um, and if we have things to wrong in the image to write in the images. Uh, it could be image patches. So there's a patches in, when you run the Docker file inside, there is also reference to a patch. 
uh, to do a little code change. And all those, and I think almost those are in upstream already. And the thing why we have here is because we want to make sure whatever we do in the code base, we have we have not just go to upstream, but we have document that down. So every time the CI runs the 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 update uh, or uh, uh, just random jobs, you will re you will recreate the entire charts and then rebase everything on top, including the image gets rebuilt and run a full task, including every ten pass task you you ever found. And so that's will make sure us doing the right job when we uh, when we keep those patches. And also, if you run a if you have ever ever uh, operated a whole cloud, and um, the the innovations you you put out yesterday, you want to keep make sure that tomorrow you still get to uh, get to find those innovations and you get to bring them to the next level in the in the upstream, uh, but not blocked by by the the, the code changes the code changes you uh, do yesterday. And it there we have a so atmosphere is fully integrated with Zool, so it's getting with Zool. Um, and we have a wrong upgrade job for every stable and master main branching. Uh, if you check out the job, you will see uh, the way how we upgrade is to you check out and then you do the task command like what I show. And by the way, if you don't do the uh, if you, point, you don't point out that's a uh, all in one environment like here, you will run the way that I mentioned to create a, the heat stake, have the instance and build the multiple nodes. And so you create you create an environment here and check out again and create again. And do and do the conversion again. And that's exactly how we do the upgrade in the environment. Oh by the way, also do the verify. Here's a verify. You just change it you change the converge to verify. That's it. You run the you run the ten pass and other test. So in the environment uh, like this one, say if I want to change something in the inventory groups uh, on every node. For uh, for general, like for example, this part, the last part is about changing the Helm uh, deconfig in uh, in new charts. So uh, if I enable the debugs, and I run, so then I run exactly the same ways that I run uh, when we're trying to build the environment. Like for example, if I just want to run OpenStack, I can change and add a tag that what I show. Otherwise, we just build the wrong playbooks. Like this, um, the the entire process of, of running the cloud is within one hour to uh, to, to uh, maybe less than two hours. Depends on how much resources you provide to the, the clusters. And so, what I show you is exactly the way that how we upgrade. But there's something hidden inside. Is that uh, the, the reason that you can directly run the same command to do the upgrade is because we already embedded the upgrade process inside the, inside the, uh, the atmosphere uh, playbooks. Uh, so, for example, if you want, if you have a SAP cluster that for your whole OpenStack, you want to upgrade to the new atmosphere, uh, the atmosphere with the SAP collection SAP that uh, or SAP collection SAP, you will directly adapt your current SAPs. Uh, Cluster, and not just that, you will ch you will check on your versions of your SAP, uh, whatever new or old. In, if you if you want to upgrade to the new one, like the default in the atmosphere, uh, you the atmosphere will check on versions and help you directly do the upgrade and manage it and waiting for that to finish for you. So the entire upgrade process is already embedded in the atmosphere, um, and including other places. There's like. Things runs before is running before the before to, to create some resources or running after, and that's that's why also why we have the upgrade job to make sure that all the upgrade process there uh, we we define it is correctly and working. So uh, to summarize what we have here, I know we only have 30 minutes. It's really quick talk. I thank you to like uh, observe these messages. Uh, I know it's like a too brief level. 
uh, the next slide, I think we can go dive one of the concept, and I really want to dive very deep. But in the concept, uh, the thing we, I think is very precious about atmosphere is not just because every of, every of, every of our clouds is exactly using that repository. So we didn't change anything. We just, we just, you just store your inventory, right? You store your keys, you store your notes, and you keep those safe at some place, nobody else touch. When you want to run a cloud again, you just randomly pull the, pull the repository, or you just uh, do the SMO collection, double the collection, and run against the versions you want. Uh, we, and sometimes if you want to add compute nodes, pretty much the same way. Um, so the thing important about is, I think it's about, uh, atmosphere is something that we not just integrate and upgrade. We try to make sure your upgrade goes, and integrate goes really fast. Um, so it's not something that I say we integrate fast. It's just we are using master. That's I don't know nothing faster than using master. Um, and for some like for staff, we're using that the very last release. Uh, for Kubernetes the, at the beginning level, uh, we have patches to go to the uh, very last release. Uh, but right now I think it's 1.28 uh, for 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 the deployments. Um, but we're changing within these months. And also important about uh, the maintain. We able to we able to bring the maintain resources back, and we able to keep with upstream. The upstream first. Uh, I think atmosphere. I hope I say atmosphere is a proven that you can follow the upstream. But we get those layers and methods that we we, we cut the upstream with a little bit part. So. Uh, you, you throw things to upstream, but you don't block your atmosphere to release, to merge into the customer. So the customer happy because you directly give the solution and you test it. The upstream is happy. And on one day, you will be happy because everything pulled down to your, uh, that, when your atmosphere trying to upgrade. And the, uh, uh, all the CICDs and alert feedings, I think that everything, everything I say that uh, is probably, is, uh, probably the, uh, the things that I think make atmosphere uh, a new fashion way. Uh, I hope I can say that. Um, new fashion way. So, um, thank you. That's everything for my talk. Is there a question? Okay, thank you.